is a pleasure and honor to be here with you tonight in this beautiful city. And I'm very glad that I'm here in the university and a lot of students are attending. I always feel homesick when I'm in the university and seeing the labs and the lecture rooms and the professors. I spent so many years in school and actually, in addition to me being the group leader at the Structures Group at NIST, I also uh, I am an adjunct professor at George Washington University, so I always love interacting with students and teaching and stuff. Um, let me start by apologizing. I just arrived yesterday and I am still jet lagged. So if I fall asleep, don't blame me. So uh, these video cameras, excuse me, video video cameras are not allowed oh. because I will be showing pictures that are copyrighted, so I think there is a rule and it's, the sign is on the door. Okay. So I appreciate it if you can turn it off, please. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm here to, tonight to talk to you about the uh, technical investigation that was conducted at the NIST. NIST stands for National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is uh, an agency of the Department of Commerce in the United States. Just to give you a little bit of background at the beginning, uh, the collapse of the World Trade Center towers following the terrorist attacks on 9-11 uh, changed our lives in the US and possibly it changed your life here in Europe as well. And a lot of us still remember where we were that day and what happened. But basically that was uh, the worst building disaster ever, killing more than 2,700 people, including more than 400 emergency responders uh, that were killed that day. After the collapse, there was a strong demand from the public, from the private sector, from the family of the, of the victim to know how and why the collapse occurred. And if there was a way to prevent that collapse from happening. And are there few lessons for the future that we can learn from this collapse. So as such, Congress has this to lead an investigation to the collapse of the World Trade Center Towers. Here I'm showing what were the objectives of the NIST investigation. The items involved here at the bottom identify specific areas in current national building and fire model code standards and practices that current revision was the overarching theme for this investigation. We wanted to know whether there are lessons to be learned from this uh, collapse so that we can prevent those collapses from happening in the future. So uh, in order to achieve that objective, we were asked to determine how and why the World Trade Center Towers collapsed, what's the mechanism by which those buildings collapsed, and same thing for World Trade Center Building 7. Also, determine the number of why the number of injuries and fatalities were high in some locations and low in some other locations, and is there anything to be learned from that for building evacuation or building egress, as we call it, and the emergency response. The investigation was very comprehensive, and you can see here to the left some of the input that went into the investigation. The BPAT recommendation, this is a report that was conducted by FEMA early on to look into the collapse. It has been an, an input from government, industry, and professional academics, and also public input. And we used a lot of uh, information, uh, you can see here in the yellow uh, box, including videos, uh, photographic and videographic uh, evidence, oral history, emergency response records, and so forth. The investigation was composed of five, eight different projects. The first one, or the, uh, not the first one, but the ultimate objective was the project that dealt with structural collapse. Trying to take the input from the, those three projects in order to figure out exactly what happened on that day. There was analysis of steel that was recovered from the uh, site. 
we did the baseline performance and impact damage. That's a project that I led, and I'll be speaking about uh, all these projects in uh, some detail. And there was a fire project, a project that simulated the fire dynamics and evolution of fire, of fire and temperature of the structural members. All those three components. I don't think this is working. Yeah. All those three components fed into that final project that determined the sequence of collapse and the collapse hypothesis. In addition to those four projects, there were projects de dealing with the analysis of codes and practices that were used in the building of the tower, uh, analysis of the active fire suppression system, including the sprinkler system, and evacuation procedures, uh, and also fire response uh, on that day. Uh, just some introductory remarks, the investigation started in August of 2002 and lasted for over three years. We finished the tower's invest investigation in uh, 2005. It was funded at the level of $16 million. Um, I'm here standing on the shoulder of 250 engineers, scientists, and mathematicians who contributed to the technical work. Not all these people were uh, at NIST or NIST employees, but a large uh, portion of those people were from industry, from private sector consulting offices and firms, and from academia as well, who participated in the investigation. It's very hard for me in this short presentation to cover all aspects of the investigation, uh, the eight projects and all the details. So what I would like you to come, out, uh, come away from this uh, presentation is just an understanding of the magnitude and complexity of this investigation and the problem that we had to address, an understanding of the tools and the science that were brought to uh, bear in this investigation, and finally an understanding of NIST's findings as to how and why the towers collapsed. This slide basically shows the four major parts of the investigation that I just described. We start with the aircraft impact analysis, where we put a model of the building, a model of the aircraft, and impacted the building by the aircraft to figure out what was the damage to the building. We have an idea about the damage to the exterior of the building from the multitudes of videos and photographs that we have, but we didn't know exactly what happened inside the building, what happened to the floor systems, what happened to the core. So we did this analysis to understand not only the structural damage, but also what happened to the building contents, because that would feed into the second part of the analysis, which is the fire dynamic simulation. At the NIST, we developed a program called FDS, Fire Dynamic Simulator, and that's a finite difference program. Its uh, mission basically is to uh, simulate the progression. It's a CFD program, Computational Fluid Dynamics Program, solving the net gear stocks equation, trying to model the uh, progress and growth of fire as it's moving from one area to another. The outcome of this program would give, or, 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 or of this model, would give us two things. The gas temperatures and also the heat transfer rate. Basically, we take the gas temperatures, these are temperatures in the air inside the building, and impose it onto a thermal model of the tower, including fireproofing, and putting this gas temperature into this type of models will give us a temperature on the steel and concrete and suction members of the towers. And once we have that, we go to the last stage, which is basically taking the damage from this analysis, the temperatures from this analysis, and putting everything into a structural model of the towers, and that will tell us how the products will be. Um, this again shows you the sequence of the analyses. I'll start with this one here because we are, I'm not going to cover it in detail. Reference models. The first stage of this, the towers were unique, the towers were large, and the develop, development of comprehensive models of these towers was a very difficult task. So we worked very closely with the designer of the towers, Leslie Robertson Associates, uh, it's a big consulting firm in New York, and we developed what we call 
reference models. I'm going to be showing this briefly. These reference models, and from them, we, we develop the models for uh, the aircraft impact analysis. The aircraft impact analysis provided us with damage to fire barriers, ventilation, and fuel distribution. It gave us an idea about the fire moving damage and also the structural damage within the towers. And all this information we fed into the fire dynamic analysis, which provided the gas temperatures, which were fed into thermal analysis, a thermal model of the structure that provided temperature histories on the uh, tower components, and finally the structural analysis up to collapse. One, two problems actually with this sequence that you just saw. Number one, the spatial distribution of these models completely vary from one model to another. By, met, by that, if you, if you understand finite elements, we have always have a mesh size. This mesh size can be a, a 0.1 inches or a few millimeters, or it can be meters if you're using beam elements. So all these models use different, different mesh, mesh densities. Sometimes they're very, very detailed as we did in the aircraft impact analysis. Sometimes they are not as detailed as we did in the final structural analysis. So there was a problem uh, trying to link all these pieces together. Not only that, delta T, the time increment for the, all these analyses, was different from one software to another. The aircraft impact analysis, delta T, was in the order of microseconds, or even 0.8 of that. Uh, for the fire dynamic simulation, it's uh, 10 to the power of 3, and for the thermal analysis, the delta T was one second, and for the final structural analysis, it was an order of minutes. So trying to link all these both models and programs together was a big problem for us. 